so my partner and I moved to a desert community in the American Southwest. I've always wanted to live down here, and so far I absolutely love it. I love the quiet, living on the outskirts of town with a desert to my horizon on the backyard, how friendly people are, the stars blooming at night, the wildlife, just the overall space. I'm not really bothered by the occasional snake, scorpion, or coyote in my yard, but recently I've been getting the feeling that there have been other creatures in my yard as well. Even if I'm not imagining it, I don't know if this is worth doing something about or what I even can do, but I'll try to explain. My partner got a lucrative job offer from a hospital here, where he covers the night shift for his specialty at most of the local hospitals in three states. Small hospitals in remote areas often offer nice incentives to bring people in from larger cities. Since we were looking to move here anyway, we decided to take the position for a couple of years and see if I could find a job in my field here in the meantime. At the moment, I'm actually working remotely, and I stay on the night shift to be able to see my fiancé more. We get up at around 2 to 3 p.m. and he goes to work, early enough for me to run around and do any shopping or chores in the afternoon. He gets back from work at around 5 a.m., and we head to bed at around 7 a.m., it's a pretty intense schedule, but at least he has every other week off. This is important later. So around 5pm, I'm home alone all day at the duplex that we rent from an elderly couple down the block. We used to have a medical resident living on the other side, but she would never talk to us and one day she just moved out. Apparently, she really tore the place apart, so there are contractors working in the other side during the days on most days. I sit at the kitchen table and work during the night, occasionally going out to walk our old dog, get the mail, or water the plants in the courtyard. The entire house is visible from that courtyard, because there are windows and glass doors leading to basically every room from there. From here, I'll just detail the various incidents as they've occurred with minimal editorializing. Number 1. Four weeks ago, I went back to sleep after my partner left for work. About an hour later at one point, I woke up and realized that my dog had been barking for an unusually long time, and doing his danger bark as well. The lawn guys and delivery folks occasionally come into our cart yard and we just moved in, so I figured it must be something like that. Still, he knows those delivery guys and neighbors by now, and they usually leave fairly quickly. He must have been barking for a full two plus minutes by now. I sat up in bed and looked out into the courtyard. There was a man I didn't recognize, and he was acting quite weird. He was standing near the front door, trying to look into the windows around the side, looking into windows progressively further from the door. Without thinking, I called out to him, I'll be right there. I thought perhaps he was a delivery guy needing a signature or something. The guy stepped back quickly, turned around and sped walked out of the courtyard. As he did so, he gave me this extremely malevolent stare. I had never quite seen anything like it before. It startled me because he looked right at me dead in the eye through the window and just looked so disgusted and hateful. But during the day, you can't even see through the blinds from the outside. I've checked. So how the hell did he know where I was? I admit, this event freaked me out and may have laid the groundwork for my impressions of the potentially perfectly normal events outlined below. I flash back to this moment regularly for some reason. 2. Three weeks ago, some strange stuff started to happen. My partner offered to work some extra shifts on what would normally be his week off, so I was home alone even more often. A few times, I would hear what I thought must be one of my elderly neighbors around the side of the house, but when I went to check, there was nobody there. I would start to hear someone walking around the outside at night as well. The area is surrounded by gravel, so unless someone steps slowly, you can hear the things moving around. When I'm laying in bed working on things a few times, I become acutely aware of noise just outside the bedroom window late at night. I started checking the area with a flashlight when I went outside. Sometimes I would hear bipedal footsteps on the roof multiple times during periods where the neighbors confirmed that no contractors were supposed to be up there, 
often at night. The feeling of being watched a lot at night began as well, and I started leaving the outdoor lights on all night while I'm there, especially in the courtyard. I stopped taking showers alone because I sometimes heard footsteps on the roof when I was in there, and there's a skylight over the shower. I researched, bought, and installed the security system and a couple of cameras in that courtyard. Number 3. Two weeks ago, this is when things got a bit more serious. I pulled into my parking space and saw one of the elderly neighbors peering into my bedroom window in the afternoon. I greeted him and he said he was going around the side of the house to activate the sprinkler system that happens to have a hub on our property. Unclear if this is related. I put up opaque clings in the windows of the bedroom to block some of the light when we're sleeping during the day. As soon as I did, I stopped feeling being watched from the bedroom window, but began feeling uncomfortable that my view of the courtyard was now obscured. Still though, I felt better for two days at least. The next night, I started feeling being watched from the living room windows while I was working though, and eventually the kitchen window specifically. That night, I had a small panic attack and spent a lot of time in bed under the covers with my dog in the room with me. I don't know the source of my discomfort though, and kept telling myself I was just being paranoid. I chalked it up to reading some creepy stuff the week before. I even had to cancel an event because I couldn't sleep because of the extreme anxiety. I talked at length with my partner about getting more cameras, but we didn't have enough money. I was still in denial about the reasons for my discomfort, so I dropped it. I did notice, though, that stuff in the courtyard seemed to be sometimes moved around, and I watched the camera to figure out that the neighbor woman had done it. Beer cans and some other stuff were found around the property that weren't ours, too, but I think it might have been the wind. Things related to our cars and garbage cans started being messed with, but you can see around for miles and there weren't really many people around to do so. I started hearing a tapping on the window, too, but I ignored it. 4. Last week. We were traveling for part of the week and when we got back we were in very good spirits. My partner went right back to work and my nights became more predictable. Feeling good and doing things until a few hours after it gets dark, suddenly feel a bit shitty. Not wanting to do things that put me near the windows, I decide to curl up in bed with my dog in my room and refuse to move until my partner gets home. Well, this happened every night this past week. Finally, though, I noticed that for some reason my dog kept staring at the kitchen window with both ears facing toward it, ignoring any commands or questions for long periods of time. My very curious cat repeatedly kept trying to see something outside of it as well during the night. This finally jogged me back to reality, and I realized that this oppressive sensation of being watched every night, starting around 10 p.m. and continuing until dawn, was mostly originating from that kitchen window. Honestly though, the whole house had started to freak me out now. There wasn't anywhere to hide that didn't have windows except the garage or the bathroom. I took my phone and a knife with me everywhere I went from then on. I constantly checked the courtyard, because every room had a door leading to it. Tonight I took my dog out, and I heard someone walking towards us from the side of the house. I called out and shone my flashlight over to where I heard it, but it stopped, and when I looked I saw nothing there. Normally I would have gone to investigate, but for some reason I had the strongest feeling that I probably shouldn't. The same thing happened later in the evening too. When I took the dog out yesterday around midnight, someone was coming across the field. They had a flashlight with them, but when they got near me they shut it off. I couldn't see them after that, and they didn't respond to any of my calling out to them. I feel like I'm in a slow motion horror movie, but during the day and my partner's weeks off, everything is usually perfectly normal, so I really don't know what to think. I can't tell whether any of this is real or not. I don't have any close friends here, I'm planning to buy a camera and motion lights for the back when I have money next week. But, and I know this sounds crazy, I really don't know if that's a good idea. I think whoever this is, once I've seen them, they're going to escalate. I don't know why I think that. My partner wants me to get a concealed carry and another younger dog. This isn't known to be an unsafe area at all, but the properties are spaced pretty well. I'd like some honest advice about this, and thank you for your time.
This happened about 15 years ago. At the time, I was dating around and had a few creepy encounters, but this guy takes the cake. He was an acquaintance of my brother who he had met at a bar a few times and was showing around the local area because he was new to the country. My brother had set us up because he was apparently desperate for a girlfriend, and I guess I was pretty desperate too, because we went out on a date together. Well, that date ended up being probably the worst first date I've ever been on, perhaps. I showed up to the restaurant we were supposed to be meeting at. He was very late, which wasn't a huge deal though, so I let it slip and we went to sit down. To be quite honest, I knew from the very start that I wasn't really going to be attracted to him, but I thought I should be polite and at least see if we had a nice night before writing him off entirely. He started off politely too, held the door for me, pulled my seat out. It wasn't really anything necessary, but it was a nice gesture anyway. Then, when we were sitting down waiting for someone to come and take our orders, I was reading the menu when he started talking about how much his fiancé would have liked this place. That took me by surprise, so naturally I asked. He revealed that he had a fiancé before moving over here, but he had just left her to move to another country. I asked why they had broken up, and he said they never really had as such, but he'd gotten fed up over her nagging him about various things, and just moved away one day. Well, call me awkward, but I really didn't know what to say after that revelation, so I changed the subject and started asking him more about himself and where he used to live. He wasn't very forthcoming at all. Eventually, our waiter turned up and started talking to us. To clarify the next part, our waiter was a man of color, and he had an unusual accent for our area as well. My date stared blankly at him for a while, and then turned to me and said, you understand this guy? I said that yes, I obviously could understand him before telling the waiter our orders. After he left, my lovely date continued to shock me. I wouldn't normally leave the ordering to the lady, but that brown guy talked really weirdly. I just couldn't get it. Wow, what a way to tell me you're a racist and a sexist in one breath, dude. Again, I was speechless for a few moments before I got really angry with him. I don't remember exactly what I said. It was something along the lines of, well, I'm not a lady so I can order for myself just fine, thanks. Were the racial remarks really necessary? Then he got really annoyed and started arguing with me about being a racist. I pointed out that he wouldn't have met me if he just stuck to people he was used to in his own country. He did calm down a bit then and told me he wouldn't want that because he was so glad he'd met me. Honestly, I found that quite weird considering I didn't see any way to say this date was going well, but he didn't know me very well at all either. I decided since I'd ordered I should stay, get my meal, and at least try to redeem the evening before I left and never had to see this man again. I answered some of his questions about me, basic getting to know me and small talk type stuff. Then he started on about my previous dates. If I was a virgin, whether I would be willing to wait until marriage, then the submissiveness to my husband stuff or not. It was at this point I realized that I was most likely on a date with a religious bigot. Hence all this weird attitude to sexual stuff and other close-minded bullshit. I said old frut, none of your business, I think I'm gonna leave now. I checked the prices on the menu and left money for my half of the food plus a tip on the table, and got up to leave. He told me he didn't see why I was being so unreasonable with him, as though this had been a completely normal date. Then he told me I couldn't expect him to take my money because that was an insult to him. Fine, dude, you want to pay for a meal that's not getting eaten, you go for it. I'm not that mad about spending money that I'll stop you. So I took my money back and stormed straight out. I assumed that yes, it was an awful evening, but I would never have to see him again. Well, I wasn't even back to my house yet when my brother started bombarding me with texts asking where I was, because my date had called him in tears saying I'd gone off for no good reason, and he didn't know where I was or what to do. Thankfully, my brother was pretty calm about it, and assumed I at least had left for a reason. I explained everything to him, and he seemed very surprised too. After that night, we both tried to cut contact. My brother stopped meeting up with the guy, and we both blocked the Facebook account we had for him too. My brother also blocked his number, because he would just not stop texting him about me, alternating between really worried about me and saying he hoped I dropped dead. 
then started the endless different social media accounts to harass us. He told my brother he didn't know why we'd stopped talking to him. He posted a bunch of weird posts describing me in detail before going on to call me a lot of horrible names. We kept blocking them when they popped up and trying to move on, but then the harassment got worse. He'd either found me, followed me at some point, or got my address from a friend because he turned up one day standing around outside my house, asking to come in and speak to me. When I refused to let him in, he grabbed my arm to prevent me from going in either and started telling me he'd never let me go because I would never find a man who would love me like he did. If I walked away from him again, I would regret it one day when I was old and lonely. He went on and on like this for ages while I tried to pull my arm away from him. I got fed up of this and yelled at him to get off me and leave me alone. Then I kicked him right in the shin. He let go of my arm but cursed at me, saying I was being ungrateful to him. I took the opportunity to run inside and lock my door. Then this crazy fool ran up and started banging on my door trying to burst it inward. I was getting really upset by this man and super fed up with his presence in my life. So I grabbed the phone and called the police, telling them that someone was trying to break into my home. I was told someone would be with me soon, but 20 to 30 minutes later, there was no sign of them anywhere. I was getting quite upset because this man was forcing my door down, and I knew the lock was going to break soon. I called my brother who lives nearby just because I knew he would come, even though I wasn't sure if he would really be able to help much. About 15 minutes later, my brother turned up and after a brief conversation I couldn't quite hear outside. The pressure was gone off the door. I waited a few minutes and then texted my brother to see what was going on and if it would be alright to look outside now. He didn't reply. The next thing I heard was the police storming up. I went outside to see what was going on. Apparently after my initial call, they had received another call from a neighbor saying there were two men fighting on my lawn. I guess this was my brother and the guy, since my brother looked completely out of breath and pretty shaken up, and the guy wasn't around anymore. My brother explained to the police that he had been trying to stop the man getting into my house when the man had sucker punched him. I told my side of the story and some of my other neighbors were asked about what they had seen. They were able to tell them about his attempts to get in, plus there were marks on the outer side of the door where he had been repeatedly trying to break it. The police went to look for him and a few weeks afterward I was called and told they thought they had found him. When they took me to look at the suspected person though, it was not the same man. I didn't hear anything else about him and I don't know what happened to him. I didn't see him again so I'm probably safe after 15 years now. This happened to me in high school, when I was in 11th grade. I was about 16 years old. The street I lived on was in New York City, and it was a pretty small street, so you can hear anything that happens at each end of it. You can hear the kids laughing, kids falling off their bikes, etc. This is an important detail for the story. Another important detail is the house I lived in only had one front entrance to get in. The front entrance had two doors, a screen door, which was the first thing an outsider would see when they approached my house, and a wooden door. Both had locks, so no one could just open the screen door unless they had a key with them. I note this due to all the videos I watched online of people just yanking screen doors open. I was living alone for a month, and honestly it was pretty fun and mundane. My parents were living in California at that time due to work. One day, while I was on my computer doing something, there were these long, strong knocks at the screen door. I left my room and approached the front wooden door cautiously. I am an easily anxious person and it does not help that I kept watching true crime documentary videos. The person on the other side of my door knocked on the screen door again. I peered through the peephole of the wooden door and could see this white middle-aged dude just standing there moving his head side to side. His body was doing these little jumpy movements people do when they're standing and waiting. I decided to open the wooden door just a little bit, thinking the front screen door was going to protect me anyway. What's wrong? I asked him. The guy instantly responded. There's been a car crash, please come out here and help me. I think a kid that was riding his bike just got run over. Where's the car crash? I asked. The guy responded. 
It's down the street, over here. He pointed to one end of the street. Remember how I said the street was small and I could hear anything? Even a kid falling off his bike? I was sure as hell I would have been able to hear a fucking car crash. The second he said that, my guard immediately went up because I was quite scared. I was also really pissed off for some reason. I don't know why you're coming to me. What do you think I'm going to do? Call 911. The guy pushed on with what he was saying before and asked me to come out to see the car crash with him and to see if there was anything we could do to help. I remember saying, call 911 or I'll call them for you. They'll be able to handle this much better than I can. I closed the wooden door and locked it behind me. If you're wondering, I did not call 911. I went to my room and watched YouTube videos instead. I know, a weird thing to do, but I was trying to calm myself down. My heart was beating so fast in my chest. I kept looking at the time. I forgot what specific time it was, but I remember it being in the afternoon. The sky was bright blue at least. I waited for a few hours when I was sure the guy would be gone. I went back to the front entrance and opened the wooden door, made sure no one was there. Then I opened the screen door to see this car crash at the end of the street. Why did I do this? I wanted to truly make sure there was nothing that had happened. I know I said I would have heard it, but I wanted to make sure just in case I was ignoring an actual thing that I just happened to somehow not hear. There was nothing there though. No kid, no crashed car, not even any debris. Just the usual street end that I was used to. At that time, I felt an immense sense of relief. It's only a few years later when I thought about this moment again and realized that guy had some malicious intention for me. Good thing I kept myself level-headed and realized there was no way there could have been a crash without me hearing. God knows what the fuck could have happened. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here as always. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed the content of this video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you do decide you like my content enough to subscribe, please be sure to hit the bell button right next to the subscribe button and turn notifications to all so you can be notified of every video I post in the future. If you don't feel like doing that though, I post a video nearly every day, so you can just come back every now and then and check up on what you missed. If you guys have any criticisms on what I can do better or any feedback on the stories in the video, please be sure to leave them in the comments below, as I always enjoy reading all the comments and I try to give them hearts and respond when I can. If you guys would like to reach me for any reason or you would like to send in a story to be read, you can go ahead and take a look in the description below the video. You'll find a link to all of my social media, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has a theme, and how you would like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in. Last but not least, I also run two other channels, Mr. Blue Skies and Darkest Hour, where I do true crime videos and dark documentaries respectively. If that kind of content sounds interesting to you, why not go ahead and check it out and see if it is for you. Uh, aside from that though guys, I think that's pretty much it for now. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.